What's up guys, it's Michael Matiazzi here with another video for you today. Amidst the whole COVID-19 social distancing stay at home pandemic, I've noticed I've gotten into a really bad habit of just having my phone on me all the time. And when I was at work, I had gotten so good at keeping myself away from it and now I find it increasingly hard to do so because I'm at home all the time and I have so much free time on my hands I just want to pick it up and check what's going on all the time. While our phones and other technological devices are amazing at this time for connecting us all together with stuff like FaceTime and WhatsApp and Skype, it's not necessarily good for us to be on them all the time either. An analogy I've thought of for our phones is they're almost like adult pacifiers. We shouldn't have them on us all the time, but we do, and we crave to have them on us all the time. Today, I'm going to tell you six different ways that you can distance yourself from your phone amidst this pandemic and even afterwards when it's all over, just because these are healthy habits to incorporate. Number one, set up time limits for your favorite apps. There are many apps that you can install on your phone and some are actually already even pre-built in. These include screen time for iOS, digital well-being for Android, and many more. And you can program on these apps to set up time limits onto the apps that you use the most. And once this time limit is reached, your phone will shut this app off disallowing you to use it for the rest of the day, unless you allow yourself to from your phone settings, which I highly recommend you don't do. Right now, I have a 45 minute time limit on all of my apps that I've been using the most, such as Instagram, Facebook, all the sports apps, Reddit, just because those are the ones that have been consuming my time the most. It's really important to stay strict on these time limits you set for yourself, knowing that we're really not missing out on anything that we can just learn later or information we could gather at another time in the day. There's no fire to learn it right now. And the last thing we want to be is a slave to our smartphones. Every day since I've set this 45 minute limit onto these apps, I've noticed the following. Whenever I reach the 45 minute limit, it's always the same reaction. I'm always just like, wow, I've already wasted 45 minutes just looking at Reddit and Instagram and it's only 1 p.m.? That's so much valuable time wasted, I could have been doing something else. Hence, this motivates me to do more once I reach this limit, knowing how much time I've wasted, how much time I could have spent doing something else more productive. Time has an opportunity cost as well. Number two, keep your phone away from your body. Now we're all guilty of this. We have all at one point taken our phone out of our pocket, convincing ourselves that we are checking for the time. But are we actually? As soon as we see a little notification of a text message or an Instagram comment, we're immediately diving into our phones, curious about what's going on. And so next thing you know, we're pulled into a text conversation or we're pulled into Instagram reading about a caption or a comment and then we're scrolling down, checking out more captions, more comments, more posts. For me, it's usually a sport notification like a free agent signing or a critical trade that I could have learned about later on in the day. Other random pop culture events that are occurring in the world are also guilty for pulling me in from news apps, all which I could have heard about later on. There is no fire to need to know it now. And just by habit, a few minutes later, we find ourselves pulling our phones out of our pocket again, getting caught in the exact same vicious cycle. It never ends and it destroys our productivity. Another thing we are all guilty of is being in the middle of a conversation with someone face to face our phones are in our pocket, our phone vibrates, and then suddenly we're not engaged in the conversation we're having with the person in front of us anymore. Now we're thinking about, okay, who's texting me? What sport notification is going on? What, what is it that I need to know? And then we're curious, and now we're concentrating on two different things while we're having a conversation with someone right in front of us. So my tip to combat this is don't have your phone in your pocket, have your phone on a desk in another room when you're working or just in a drawer away from your body. When I'm coaching, I do this. I have my phone in another room on another desk. So that way I have zero distraction, especially since I'm coaching kids more often than not. And kids know when you're not giving them 100% attention. Could you imagine that? What kind of coach would I be if I was like, oh yeah, like just uh, keep squatting. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. Yeah, let's see some pull-ups. Oh, you're done? Oh, sorry, can you do a few more? I didn't catch those. I also keep my phone in another room while I'm working out 
So this way my mind can just focus on the tasks I need to do physically. I don't want to get pulled into another direction when I should be focusing on exercising. When I'm exercising, that's my me time. So when you're hanging out with your friends or you're on a date or you're going to a restaurant with your family, you could even leave your phone in your car. This way you don't have any reason to pull it out and distract yourself. You can interact with the person right there in front of you. Number three, turn off notifications. Going back to my earlier point about vibrations distracting us when we feel them in our pocket, because we're so curious what's going on. When we turn off notifications, our phones won't vibrate because they're not given a reason to. Other options include putting your phone into do not disturb mode. This way you just have less reasons to get sucked into your phone. There's no sport trades, no pop culture news feed, no Instagram comments coming through that are trying to lure you into your phone to get further distracted. I also find putting your phone into airplane mode really helps as well. I've been doing this a lot when I've been reading ebooks. Number four, don't use your phone one hour before you go to bed or one hour within waking up. The reason not to use your phone before you go to bed is because our phones emit off something called blue light. When our eyes see this blue light, our brains are then convinced it's the sun as if the sun's still out. And so when our brain absorbs this, it delays the production of a sleep-inducing hormone called melatonin, making it harder to fall asleep. Now, when I first read this, I immediately thought, well, there's a night mode and dark mode that are on my phone which combat this. That's nothing I have to be worried about. But it turns out night mode or dark mode doesn't necessarily make it any better because your phone is still leaving off yellow and red light, which is still reducing melatonin production. If you don't put your phone into nighttime mode or don't shut it off, there's also the risk that your phone is vibrating and pinging and lighting up in the middle of the night right at your night table as you're trying to sleep, interfering with REM or rapid eye movement sleep which is the most important type of sleep that your body needs. And reducing REM sleep compromises your alertness for the next day. So for this, I've gone back to a traditional alarm clock. I no longer rely on my smartphone to wake me up in the morning. And I keep my phone off and away from me when I sleep. Having my phone off also ensures I won't be woken up by any emergency alerts coming into my phone. And on top of that, if I'm having a night where I'm finding it very hard to fall asleep, I'm not urged to pull my phone out to check out what's going on, which will then just delay my sleep even further. You'll also want to avoid pulling your phone out within the first hour of you waking up in the morning. Dr. Benders Haiti says turning on your phone immediately upon waking up will more likely increase your levels of stress and overwhelming. As you start getting bombarded with work emails, Instagram captions, text messages, pings for meetings, your agenda is no longer your own. It is now somebody else's. You also risk potentially polluting your mind with negative posts and comments, which can influence and feed your mind negative thoughts, dragging out onto the rest of your day, making you feel stressed and upset throughout the entire day. Email notifications in the morning and throughout the day are linked to higher levels of anxiety. At the University of British Columbia, researchers conducted a study amongst 124 students and professors. They asked that they all checked emails frequently for the first week of the study. And then the following week, they were only allowed to check their emails three times a day. And then after that, all notifications were shut off. The researchers found that when time was restricted looking at emails, not only did this reduce levels of anxiety and stress, but it also increased feelings of positivity amongst all the participants. So this is why I don't turn on my phone right away when I wake up anymore, and I also don't have my phone on me whenever I'm about to go to bed. But there is one thing that always happens. I want to Google something. Something pops into my mind right before I'm going to bed, and I want to know it immediately. So my advice for this, have a little journal on you so you can write down what it is you want to research and look up. So then that way you can do it at a later point within the next day or later on in the day, depending on if it's at nighttime or in the morning. Number five, use apps to post social media posts in advance. I mainly made this category for those who are employed within marketing and other social media professions where they have to use these apps for their job and have no choice but to be on them all the time. Apps like Hootsuite allow you to schedule a day and a time 
when to make a post on a social media platform. Another tip is you can schedule a time within your workday to create these posts in advance. That way you're not doing them at home on the spot. If you need to have that post out by 7 p.m., this ensures that you're not on your phone at 6.58 struggling to get this posted and ready. You could have it prepared at 11 a.m. from work and then it posts by itself at 7 p.m. later that day. Number six, use one device for different tasks and apps. The more devices you have to check Facebook and emails and Twitter and Instagram, the more potential distractions you have to get sucked into. And the point of this video is to limit your opportunities of distractions. So what I've been doing is I limit my emails to only my computer and my phone is for checking sports news and using Instagram. This reduces the likelihood of me just getting sucked into my phone for checking emails. It's one less reason to go onto my phone, which I find very helpful. I'll give you a real life example of why this can really help. I had been using my notes app on my phone to track my calories throughout the day of what I've been eating. And after lunchtime, when I went to go to my phone to record how many calories my sandwich had, I opened my phone and the first thing I noticed was Instagram captions coming in through my feed. So I went onto Instagram. I started scrolling through for about 10 minutes and then I put my phone down, went downstairs, only to realize I forgot to do what I wanted to do in the first place, record my calories. I totally forgot. And on top of that, I wasted 10 minutes on Instagram doing nothing. I don't even remember what I saw now. For this, I started using an actual physical notepad as opposed to my notes app, giving me one less reason to get distracted by my phone. Okay guys, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Those are six ways that you can distance yourself from your phone. Please give this video a thumbs up and also please share it with that one friend you know who can never put their phone down. I think they need to see this. Please comment below what tips have worked for you and which ones you'd also like to recommend to other people that didn't make this video. I personally would love to know myself. I would like to dedicate this video to my dad, who for years was the only lawyer in Ontario who did not have a cell phone. And we always used to make fun of him for this as kids. We'd never be able to get a hold of him to get something like milk, to know what time he was coming home, and it was really frustrating. But his argument was always the same. He would always say, Oh, well, when I was your age, we didn't need any cell phones to do anything like this. If we needed to meet somewhere, we'd just get on the phone, say meet at this intersection, and we'd be there at 3 p.m. Your generation, you've got more communication, and you guys don't even know what's going on the next minute. We all survived without cell phones. I don't know what the big fire is, why we all need them now. And honestly, after distancing myself from my phone, I've come to the realization my dad and his ancient ideologies are correct. Phones aren't as necessary as we think they are but they are useful for certain things. So it is important to use them in moderation. So there you have it guys. Don't let your phone make a slave of you. Keep yourself distanced from your phone. And I hope you guys are all doing well. Thank you very much guys. I'll see you next time.